Underwater royalty doesn't always come from the dark, forgotten depths. Sometimes, it glides silently from the sunlit shallows, elegant, peaceful, and glowing like a ghost in blue silk. No sharp teeth, no sudden moves, just presence, quiet, watchful, regal. This is the Sirtokara Mori, better known as the Blue Dolphin Cichlid, a fish so gentle in its rhythm and yet so powerful in its impact that it has become a symbol of grace in aquariums around the world. But behind this graceful glide lies a mystery, a soft, fatty lump that has divided fish keepers tank by tank, country by country. A hump, a forehead, a crown, or a deformity, depending on who you ask. In some countries like Germany or the UK, blue dolphins are admired for their subtle shape, sleek, smooth, balanced. But in Turkey, it's a different story. There, fish keepers proudly display dolphins with massive, bulbous foreheads. Not slightly swollen, massive, almost cartoonish in some cases. In Turkish pet stores, they even have names. With head or without. Same species, same name, but two entirely different looking fish. So, what causes this split? Is it genetics, selective breeding, diet, temperature? Or is it something deeper, something about environment, stress, or even psychology? Today, we're diving deep into that mystery. We'll explore the natural world where these fish come from, the science behind fatty tissue growth, the controversial techniques used by breeders, and the big debate dividing the hobby. Should we even be encouraging these exaggerated humps? Because this isn't just a fish, it's a conversation about aesthetics, about nature, about what we, as aquarists, choose to value. So stay with us, because by the end of this video, you won't just know about the blue dolphin cichlid, you'll understand it. Let's begin where it all began. The wild Sirtakara Mori is endemic to Lake Malawi, a vast rift lake in East Africa that's home to over 800 species of cichlids. But the dolphin doesn't live where most of them do. While Mbunas cling to the rocks, darting in and out of crevices, dolphins prefer the open sand. They cruise slowly in groups across sunlit plains, like ghost herds, scanning the floor for small invertebrates. Their slightly downturned mouths help them sift through fine sand, sucking up tiny crustaceans and spitting out what's useless. It's calm, it's methodical, it's survival. Their natural coloring, a soft, powdery blue. Males that reach sexual maturity and dominance often darken into a deeper, richer hue, sometimes even royal blue. During moments of stress or aggression, they flash temporary black bars across their bodies. Not for decoration, but for communication. Ever noticed your dolphin's color change after a fight or during feeding? That's not just lighting, that's language. Now let's get specific. In the wild, males can reach up to 25 centimeters, about 10 inches. Females stay smaller. They prefer slightly alkaline water, pH between 7.2 and 8.8, .8, with a general hardness between 10 to 18 degrees DH. Temperatures? Around 25 to 26 degrees Celsius. Not too hot, not too cold, just stable, just calm. But here's where things start to shift, because in the wild, these dolphins rarely show massive humps. At most, a slight swelling, nothing extreme. So where did the Turkish hump come from? Is it natural or man-made? The answer is complicated. Let's start with the basics. That forehead bump isn't bone. It's soft, fatty tissue, what scientists call a nuchal pad. In other species like frontosas or flower horns, the hump is part of a display of dominance and maturity. It can signal sexual readiness or territorial strength. But in Cerdo Caramori, it's less consistent. Some males develop it heavily, others stay flat. Some bloodlines produce massive humps, others don't. That brings us to the first clue, genetics. Turkish breeders have spent years, sometimes decades, selectively pairing blue dolphins with the most prominent head growths. This isn't random. It's a methodical process repeated over generations. Males with slightly larger humps are chosen as breeders. Females that have produced offspring with visible head development are favored. Over time, this intentional selection has led to a line of blue dolphins 
with dramatically exaggerated foreheads. You won't find these in wild populations, and you're unlikely to see them in European commercial hatcheries either. This is a regional variation, shaped not by nature, but by preference. But what's the appeal? Why the obsession with the hump? For many aquarists, it's a sign of maturity, of strength, of prime condition. A fully developed male with a pronounced fatty hump stands out. It looks regal, dominant, unique. In some circles, a dolphin without a head hump is seen as incomplete, like a peacock with no tail or a lion with no mane. The hump becomes a symbol of pride, of successful care, and even of breeder status. The bigger the head, the higher the price tag, and the louder the bragging rights. Some hobbyists go even further. They believe the hump reflects the fish's internal health, that only well-fed, low-stress, genetically superior males can develop it fully. And while that's only partly true, it's helped fuel a culture where head size matters. A lot. And then there are the critics. Some aquarists argue that this obsession with the hump has gone too far. That in chasing a visual trait, we've overlooked the fish's overall health. Ever seen a dolphin with a massive forehead, but clamped fins, dull color, and zero energy? That's not a genetic win. That's imbalance. Excessive protein feeding, Poor water quality and artificially cold temperatures might create a bigger hump. But at what cost? Others warn that selecting only for head growth reduces genetic diversity. That over generations, we may be creating fish that are more fragile, more sensitive, less natural. Is the trade-off worth it? And what about you? Have you ever chosen a dolphin based on head shape? Do you believe it's a marker of health? or just a cosmetic feature? Should breeders continue pushing the limits of this trait or focus more on balance and long-term vitality? Let us know what you think in the comments. Because in the world of aquariums, beauty is always evolving, but nature always leaves clues. Tank size, diet, temperature, stress, all of these play a role. In large tanks with soft lighting, minimal stress and stable dominance hierarchies, males are more likely to grow larger humps. Why? Because their bodies feel safe. They invest energy into secondary traits, like color and head mass. But in small tanks or tanks with constant bullying, those traits shut down. The fish is in survival mode, not display mode. Diet matters too. In Turkey, it's common practice to feed dolphins a high protein schedule. Trout pellets, shrimp, live blood worms, six days a week. And then on the seventh, only spirulina or veggie flakes. Why? Breeders believe this mimics a bulk up cycle followed by a cleansing reset. Whether it's healthy or not is another question. But the results? Visually undeniable. Some even lower the temperature slightly, believing that cool water thickens the fat in the hump, making it stand out more. In fact, there are reports of breeders keeping dolphins at 17 to 18 degrees Celsius for extended periods just to promote head growth. Risky? Maybe. Effective? That's the debate. So what's the truth? It's not just one thing. It's everything. Genetics sets the stage. But environment pulls the trigger. What do you think about the hump debate? Are Turkish dolphins genetically superior? Or is it all environment? Let us know in the comments. Drop your tank size, your male to female ratio, your feeding routine. Let's build a real knowledge base for dolphin lovers by Dolphin Lovers. And before you go, I want you to really think about something. How many times have you watched a video like this? Detailed, respectful, truly valuable, and then just moved on, forgetting the name of the channel, never finding it again? Maybe this is the only time we meet. Maybe you click away and that's it. Maybe we vanish in the noise of the algorithm forever. But maybe not this time. Maybe this time you hit subscribe and that one small click becomes the beginning of something bigger. Because here, we don't chase trends, we don't cut corners, we tell real stories, we respect the fish, we respect the hobby, we respect your time. So if that means something to you, hit subscribe right now, not later, not next time. Now because we don't just make videos, we build a space where people like you belong. And who knows, maybe your story is the next one we tell. Don't scroll past, don't forget, come be a part of this. While you're here, check out our other videos. They go just as deep, and maybe even deeper. If you love fish, if you love learning, 
If you love stories that matter, then this channel was made for you. See you in the next one.